हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर पार्थ गोस्वामी एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट आई जी ए नेफ्रोपैथी टाइप ऑफ नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम सो वी विल प्रोसीड विद द किडनी लेक्चर्स ऑल राइट सो वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ आई जी ए नेफ्रोपैथी सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डिजीज द पेशेंट विल हैव रिकरंट ग्रॉस और माइक्रोस्कोपिक हिमेचूरिया सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन पेशेंट विल हैव ब्लड इन द यूरिन राइट देर इज अ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ हिमेचूरिया एंड If we talk about the microscopic characteristic or the hallmark of the disease, then there will be deposition of the immunoglobulin A in the mesangium. There will be deposition of IgA in the mesangium, and that's why the name IgA nephropathy is given to this particular type of nephrotic syndrome. And you will not believe, friends, it is the most common type of primary glomerular disease that is revealed by renal biopsy. It is also known by the name Berger disease. All right. so that was about the definition now it your pathogenesis uh, why it develop so basically friends uh, you know very well that this iga right immunoglobulin a there are five type of immunoglobulin right for example a g m d and e right among which iga is present in a very low concentration in the plasma it is not present in the plasma it is mainly seen in the mucosal secretions like that of respiratory tract secretion gastrointestinal secretion right so it will provide the defense in the mucosal infection so here what happen because of some etiology you know there will be formation of excessive iga whenever you have the respiratory or gastrointestinal infection you know in the upper respiratory or gastrointestinal infection there will be excessive formation of iga and this iga is not normal one here there is a formation of abnormal iga which is known as an iga1 and this abnormal iga is galactose deficit it is it doesn't have galactose and it is abnormal glycosylated so this particular abnormal iga is involved in the pathogenesis of this nephrotic syndrome right so there could be two possible pathogenetic mechanism for the development of nephrotic syndrome right one is that you have the immune complex formation in situ means within the glomerulus or you can have immune complex formation in the blood circulation which will ultimately get trap in the glomerulus right so first we will see in situ immune complex formation means immune complex form in the glomerulus so basically this event begin with respiratory infection or gastrointestinal infection the infection could be by virus or bacteria or sometime food protein also can be responsible like that of in celiac disease right so following this all these are mucosal infection following the mucosal infection there will be formation of excessive iga1 which is a abnormal iga right it is abnormal immunoglobulin so this abnormally form iga1 will get deposited in the glomerulus and in the glomerulus there will be formation of antibody against this iga1 this antibody could be igg right or am so there will be formation of antibody against this iga1 and they will form the immune complex formation within the glomerulus and we know very well that once the immune complex deposited in the glomerulus it will activate a complement system and so there will be release of the inflammatory mediators and leukocyte activation and so there will be damage to the glomerulus right so that will initiate a nephrotic syndrome once the complement system is activated the second way is that following this uh, mucosal infection you can have abnormal iga production right and the antibody will form in the blood circulation it it doesn't form in the glomerulus in this variety the igg antibody against the iga1 will form in the blood circulation so in the blood circulation you will have antibody formation and this antibody to antigen complex right this complex will get deposited in the glomerulus from the blood will get trap in the glomerulus and they will activate the complement system here the alternate complement system is activated mainly right all right and we know very well that once the immune complex deposited in the glomerulus they will activate the complement system and they will lead to development of nephrotic syndrome if uh, if you doesn't know this mechanism in the detail then see my lecture on pathogenesis of glomerular injury first so that you can easily understand why complement activation lead to glomerular damage 
So you can easily understand that this particular nephrotic syndrome could be associated with two diseases. One is celiac disease and liver disease. In the celiac disease, there will be defect in the intestinal mucosa, right? And in the liver disease, there will be defective clearance of immune complex. Ultimately, whenever the immune complex form in the blood, it will get cleared from the liver. So here, the clearance is defective, right? Now, light microscopic appearance of IgA nephropathy. So in the light microscopic glomerulus is absolutely normal. You will have the messenger proliferation only in this particular nephrotic syndrome. Very rarely, patient can have focal proliferative glomerulonephritis. So that is a picture like that of post-infectious glomerulonephritis or there could be formation of crescent. But these two events are very rare. Mainly, you will have only mesangial proliferation. Mesangial cells will get increased, right? All right. So in this particular diagram, you can see a mesangial deposits of IgA1, right? So in the immunofluorescence microscopy, you can observe a mesangial deposit of IgA. The IgA immunoglobulin is, uh, you know, can be deposited in the mesangium. And you know, it's essential for the diagnosis of the IgA nephropathy. You have to do the immunofluorescence microscopy, then only it can be diagnosed. So the hallmark is messenger deposit of IgA and the another hallmark is messenger proliferation. Here the patient will have C3 deposition in the glomerulus. If you see in the immunofluorescence microscopy, then C3 complement is deposited, which suggests that alternate complement system activation is present. C1Q and C4 is absent. So it's suggestive that classical complement system is not activated, but here there is a mainly activation of alternate complement pathway. All right. What could be the clinical feature of Ig nephropathy? So obviously, uh, you know, as we have discussed, the patient will have hematuria. That is the main alarming warning signs suggesting of Ig nephropathy. Right. The main clinical feature is hematuria. It could be gross or microscopic. You can see it by naked eye or in the microscopy. Right. Urine routine microscopy will reveal the blood in the urine. It is seen in young adult and children. So as we have discussed, it follows the mucosal infection. So before one to two day, patient will have upper respiratory infection or gastrointestinal infection. Following these two infection, following these two mucosal infection, after one to two day, patient will develop abnormal IgA1, right? And antibody will form against this. IgG type of antibody will form against this abnormal IgA1. They will get deposited in the glomerulus and so the patient will have hematuria because of glomerular capillary damage, right? So the hematuria is the main clinical presentation. It can last for several days and ultimately it will subside. So that, that was the clinical feature. Prognosis. Prognosis is very good, friends. You know, the patient will not die from IgA nephropathy. Very rarely it can be converted into end-stage renal disease. If the crescent is formed, crescent form in the rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. If you have seen my lecture of RPGN, then you can remember that one of the cause for development of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is IgA nephropathy. So very rarely IgA nephropathy patient can get converted into rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis and in the RPG and there will be formation of crescent and it is having the very poor prognosis. In such case, patient can die, but it's very rare. Overall, the prognosis is very good. All right. So this is all about the IgA nephropathy. Hope you can easily understand that why IgA nephropathy name is given. Because in this nephrotic syndrome, there would be deposition of IgA in the mesangium there will be messenger cell proliferation. So this is all about the IgA nephropathy, right? In the exam, you might be given the case history like that of, you know, MC, you can be asked. You can be given history that, uh, you know, young children is having the upper respiratory infection and after two days, uh, patient develop, patient uh, notice blood in the urine. So what could be the diagnosis? So this could be the one of the diagnosis, right? IgA nephropathy. Alright, thank you very much and see you soon in the next video. Till then, take care and bye bye.